We need preparedness. The best lessons, I think, on how to get prepared are again what we do for war. For soldiers, we have full time、uh, waiting to go. We have reserves that can scale us up to large numbers.、Uh, NATO has a mobile unit that can deploy very rapidly. NATO does a lot of war games to check are people well trained. Do they understand about fuel and logistics and the same radio frequencies? So they are absolutely ready to go. So those are the kinds of things we need to deal with an epidemic.、Uh, what are the key pieces?、Uh, first, is we need strong health systems in poor countries.、Uh, that's where、uh, mothers can give birth safely, kids can get all their vaccines, but also where we'll see the outbreak very early on. We need a medical reserve corps. Lots of people who've got the training and background who are ready to go with the expertise. And then we need to pair those medical people with the military, taking advantage of the military's ability to move fast, do logistics, and secure areas. We need to do simulations, germ games, not war games, so that we see where the holes are. The last time a germ game was done in the United States was back in 2001, and it didn't go so well. So far, the score is germs one, people zero. Finally, we need lots of advanced R&D in areas of vaccines and diagnostics. There are some big breakthroughs, like adeno-associated virus, that could work very, very quickly. Now, I don't have an exact budget for what this would cost, but I'm quite sure it's very modest compared to the potential harm. So I think this should absolutely be a priority. There's no need to panic. We don't have to hoard cans of spaghetti or go down into the basement, but we need to get going because time is not on our side. In fact, if there's one positive thing that can come out of the Ebola epidemic, it's that it can serve as a early warning, a wake-up call to get ready. If we start now, we can be ready for the next epidemic.